my 1880s walking skirt is done and it is beautiful but the one thing that I need that is going to make this really feel like an 1880s outfit is a blouse. This is the pattern that I'm going to be using. I will be doing A, which is the blouse. This is an 1880s style blouse. Now I have chosen a white cotton blend fabric to make this blouse with. Now I do already have the pattern pieces cut out, so let's go ahead and get them situated and arranged on the floor while I get my fabric and then get everything cut out. Here are all of the pattern pieces laid out for the blouse. My next step will be taking out the fabric, laying it out, put all of the pattern pieces on the fabric, pin it down, cut it all out, and then sew it together. All right, I know that this looks like a giant mess, but I have all of the pattern pieces laid out. Um, I'm trying to figure out here with the, the yoke in the front, so I'll go ahead and pull this one back. So basically, it goes like this. Here's the main front piece, and this is the top of the yoke. And then whenever this is sewn together, this would come down and go like this. And what I did off camera was I gathered this part here in order to make it fit like it's supposed to properly. I will then sew here on both sides. The front will be opened, there will be buttons. Um, I believe that this is what this piece is for. I will then be moving on after that and sewing in the under sleeve and then the back. This is like a very daunting, oh wow, that's messy. Don't look there. This seems very daunting, and I think that maybe it feels like it's so daunting because I haven't made that many tops or blouses. This is considered a blouse. They seem really difficult to me. I don't know why. Skirts and dresses, easy. Tops and pants and shorts, those are difficult. So I'm just trying to get this figured out. I mean, it's 1880s style. I've never worn or seen in person a shirt like this, so I'm just kind of winging it. It's my philosophy in life, really. Just wing it. I am starting here by sewing the yoke to the top of the blouse. The front, the yokes, the side, and even the back that I'm sitting on has been sewn together. I am now working on, I guess, the button enclosure, or what is this called? The front band. Okay. So I cut out the fabric. I went ahead and pressed it together, and then apparently I just sew it on. Check my instructions. Okay. It's that one. Um, and, oh, I have to sew the back together first. I have to sew it together as a piece. You know, I don't think that entirely matters. I'm gonna do the front band first. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. Got this. Take the wrong side, so the seam that's going to be inside, line up all my fabric layers. Oh, I should probably press the seams down. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and press the seams, then I'm going to come back and do this. Now that the seams are pressed, I am moving on to the front band where I'm going to pin it in place, and then sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance. Alright, here is the blouse. I have the front on top of the back, right sides facing. And as I laid it down like this, I was wondering, and I was wondering whenever I put it together anyway, this thing looks so weird. I'm like, why is this here? Um, this is actually, and I even saw it, but this is an undersleeve. And it goes under this sleeve. So I'm going to take my seam ripper, I'm going to rip along these seams. Then I'm going to sew the front and back of the blouse together. And then I think I just need to work on the sleeve. 
and I'm almost done. I have pinned the sleeve pieces in place. Well, I don't have any footage of sewing the sleeve together, but here is the completed sleeve. I even put on the cuff, and it looks pretty good. For the most part, the blouse seems to fit well. The next thing I need to do is gather the sleeves and pin the sleeves to the blouse. I am sewing the sleeves with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now all that I have left is to sew the ribbon on the back, place the collar, sew in the buttons, and do the buttonholes. Well, this is the blouse. It is mostly done. The only thing really that I need to do is actually sew the buttonholes. I just cut them and sewed the buttons on. I think this is how this is supposed to be. Like I said though, I've never seen or wore an 1880s style blouse. Not too shabby. Now I am going to put on my beautiful walking skirt here, film the reveal. I'll see you in just a bit. This skirt absolutely needed this blouse in order to make it feel like an 1880s historical outfit. Now this is not by any means historically accurate. That is not what I was going for anyway. I just wanted to try my hand at an 1880s style outfit and I feel like I did a pretty good job. I will say however the corset over top even though I did make the corsets kind of like waistcoats or vests, the corset on top brings the outfit together. Now I do want to talk briefly about a few things that I do like about the blouse and also a few things that I will change next time I make it. I do like the sleeves. I like how they're balloony on the top. I do not like though how it's not that it's tight on the bottom, it's just as soon as I move my arm the whole sleeve raises up and I like my sleeves to be long, but as long as my arms are straight, <laughs> it stays in place and it's good to go. So I think that the next time that I make this blouse, what I will end up doing is taking the under sleeve, perhaps making it a little bit longer, or just maybe just making the whole entire sleeve part maybe two inches longer. That may fix the issue that I'm having. Of course, I won't know until I actually try it. The cuff on the blouse actually turned out pretty good. It looks semi-professional. I had a lot of fun making not only the blouse, but the entire outfit, and I intend on wearing it quite a bit. Another thing that I do like about the blouse that confused me in the beginning is the yoke part here on the front. It's not bad. I do realize though, as I got almost completely done sewing it, I sewed what was supposed to be the inner facing for the front and the back. I sewed them as a double panel, I guess. so. To thicken up the fabric, I had two cuts of the yoke for the front and for the back. It was supposed to be the um, interfacing. It worked out fine either way. So not so much that that was an issue, I just realized that was a thing that I did do wrong. I do believe that this is supposed to be kind of a, not really a flowy blouse, but it's not supposed to be a tight blouse. And I think the reason for that is so that it pokes out of the skirt, I'm just assuming. Regardless, it's cute. Now I do intend on making more historically almost accurate outfits and clothing in the future. The full video for making the walking skirt and the corset as well as a 1950s skirt and a matching corset for that one will be in a card up here and also linked down below if you would like to watch that video. It is a long one. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me today while I made this blouse. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you feel like sticking around, hit the subscribe button. I do my best to upload as frequently as I am able. If I make something, I'll edit the video and I'll put it up. I don't have a schedule. That's, that's not how my life is set up right now. And again, I want to thank you. 
for hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time.